Well, hello everyone. Welcome to dinner with Nanny Bubby. It's three o'clock and you know where I'm gonna be and I hope that you join me every single day at three o'clock. I'm answering a challenge by someone in a group of mine, in a mastermind group of mine, who asked me to go live every day at three o'clock to discuss the dinner dreads. Hey, Bobby. Thank you for joining us. So happy to have you here. Send me a thumbs up or a heart so I know that you can hear me. Um, we are discussing the dinner dreads, which I describe as being an absolute panic when I had a young family uh, because I would, thanks for that, Bobby. Hey, Roseanne, there you are. You haven't been around. I was worried about you. I was gonna email you and ask you what was going on, but then you popped on this morning or last night I saw you, so welcome. Dinner dreads are when you have been busy all day, get the kids off to school, busy with phone calls, work, everything you need to do in your life and suddenly it's three o'clock and you go, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do for dinner tonight? And the thing is, if you find some think aheads, if you do some think aheads, you can make the dinner dreads go away and you can make it enjoyable. I don't want you in the drive-through and I don't want you thinking fast food and quick food. Food should be slow. It takes a slow thought process to cook nourishing food and you don't wanna just feed your family, you want to nourish them. So this is what we're going to do every day at three o'clock and I'm going, hey Dave Sugar is there and so is Tawny Bennett and I wanna say this to you Tawny, you need to send me a thumbs up if you hear this. We have rescheduled the butternut squash soup made in tiger pumpkin bowls. I was hoping you would be on today, Tawny, so I could tell you it's been rescheduled for Sunday, November 22nd, which is the Sunday right before Thanksgiving. So um, give me a thumbs up. There you go, Tawny, I'm so excited. I was gonna email you today if you weren't online live. Hi, Lana, nice to see you. Um, okay, so the first thing we do when we're in the kitchen is we put our hair up, which I didn't have time to do before I got there. Hey, Betty, how are you? Before I got here, actually. So I am going to go ahead and put my hair up. I do this because I believe in old school when you're cooking, in the kitchen, you really want your hair to kind of be out of your face and out of your food for sure. No one wants to find a long black hair in their food or even a long blonde one. Hey, Yumi, thanks for watching. We've got a lot of people today. I don't know if this looks okay. So look, this is what we're making. So let me tell you, I forgot to take the salmon out and I, um, so it is suddenly out of the freezer and it is over here, if you can see in this bowl, I'll hold it up. I don't have anyone behind the camera. This is on a tripod. And I have it defrosting in ice cold water. And what I'm going to be making with it, my hair still doesn't look good, but I'm not gonna worry about it. This is about how I look. This is about getting you out of the dinner dread. So let's proceed. Um, I have this large pot, which I don't normally use such a large pot. Hi, Steve Fox, how are you? Uh, but this is an induction burner that is in front of my stove, which you can see, let me show you. This is my stove over here. If I was cooking over there, you would not be able to see me all so well. So here I am, uh, I use this little induction burner and this induction pot made by Princess House um, is, uh, fits on this induction burner, so that's what I'm using, but you could certainly use a smaller pot. And I just wanna say once again, food is not healthy if it's coming out of a drive through and most food, if it's fast, or if you think it should be fast, whoever told you it should be fast was lying to you. It needs to be slow, it needs to be, um, that you all together as a family participate in food that nourishes all of you in the family. So today I am nourishing my family with a Brussels sprout saute. And I got these shaved Brussels sprouts that came out of this Whole Foods bag, 365 brand. I like this brand, but I did put them into this dish drainer. And I did that because sometimes when you take vegetables out of a bag, um, it, they, they have a smell to them that I don't like and they don't smell so fresh. So I will spray them with my food grade hydrogen peroxide to freshen them up and get whatever that smell is out. And I put these into a salad spinner and wash them really good, got the hydrogen, food grade hydrogen peroxide off. Hi Doug Eicher, nice to have you here. And um, uh, 
got them all prepped and ready to go. So I'm gonna get a little bit of olive oil and I'm gonna put that into the pot and we're gonna start getting this warmed up on a low fire. There we go. Okay, now one of the things that I'm gonna do first and I wanna put this in the pot first is this is a bulb of fennel. And when I looked at this bulb, even though I personally picked this out yesterday, when I took it out of the vegetable bag today, I saw this big, soft, rotten bruise on this fennel bulb. And that's just not a good thing. So what might have happened is this fennel bulb may have dropped and someone picked it up and put it back on the shelf. It probably dropped right on that little area there. I didn't see it when I picked it out, so it probably came overnight. So I'm going to take the outside of these fennel balls. And these are the fronds, and I have to tell you, these fronds are really good for garnishing whatever it is you're making. They smell so good and they look so pretty on top of whatever you might be doing. So I think what I'm gonna do is take some of these fronds and put it on top of the salmon after I'm done poaching it tonight. And I think that will just look really pretty. So I'm gonna save these on the side. And I'm going to take, um, let's see if I can open this up. I'm just gonna cut here, let me, hey, Tom Gallagher. Wow, tell my sister to watch too. Okay, there we go. Um, so there's the, the palm frond or the, and I'm gonna take off this outer leaf or even just cut this outer leaf off. So I cut off that bruised part both here and on the other side, which is where the bruise was the worst. I'm just gonna cut right through it right there and take all of that and into the garbage it goes. So I now am going to take and I'm gonna cut out, let's see if that's so bright. Can you see the, um, the stem is right in the middle there and I'm gonna take this stem and cut this out by cutting here. Sorry for the close-up, but I don't have a camera girl. Belay's not here with me on every day at three o'clock, even though I wish she were. If you're watching Belay, we'd love to have you here, let me tell you, but I have to do this with a tripod. And um, cut out this core, which I do, it's a triangle, so I kind of cut it out on a triangle. And there we go. So now I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna step out for just a minute, and I'm gonna rinse this and then I'll show you how I chop it. So I'm over here rinsing this right now. Now I'm really neurotic about making sure that this stuff gets rinsed really good. When I do an inner core like that, I'm not as neurotic as usual putting it um, in for um, the hydro food grade hydrogen peroxide. But um, so I will, anybody that wants to can send me an email at Gather at Nanny Bubby or post your question in the Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group about the food grade hydrogen peroxide or you can go to nannybubby.com and go into Game Changer tab and in the Game Changer tab you will find the food grade hydrogen peroxide and if you want to buy it there's a link to Amazon to make it easy for you. So you can jump on there. I also did a TV show um, on KLAS TV8, which I'm there every other Friday, and I'm gonna be there this Friday making mummy dogs for Halloween. You're gonna love that if you have kids and you wanna make mummy dogs. Even Roseanne, you can make it for your husband for in honor of Halloween. I'm thinking he likes stuff like that. Um, I don't think you get too many trick-or-treaters up where you live. But, um, so I'm chopping this in really fine little pieces, you know, diced pieces. I'm going to throw this into the pan to saute first. So, KLAS TV8, Mummy Dogs, this Friday at 3 o'clock. I think I come on about 3.15 or 3.10. Okay. All right. So, there we go. It's pretty much diced up. Now, the reason that I'm putting the fennel in first is because the fennel is very hard and we want it to soften before we put in the Brussels sprouts. And also, because I'm making this at 3 o'clock for all of you, to see, dinner is not gonna be until around six. I would say because we have a World Series show uh, game tonight, but we don't. I think that today's a day of rest, um, which they definitely all need, right? Dodgers are up by one, yay, three to two. 
one more win and they win the World Series. And so my family is going to be definitely celebrating that. So let me turn this tripod back around so that you can see into the pot. There we go. Okay, let me see. Okay, can you see that? I'm kind of out of the shot, but I'm not the, the main attraction here. The food is. Okay. So, so we're going to saute this up on low. Let this soften. Some people say sweat it. So we are going to sweat it. Here's kind of a brown stem that got in. And this again is fennel. So there we go. By the way, my sister gave me this pot, Tom Gallagher, so you can tell my sister that I was cooking today with the pot that she gave me, which I love. And actually, this induction burner is hers, so <laughs> you can tell her that everything she gave me is the star of the show here. Okay, so now let's talk about shallots. So I created this recipe, actually, because I um, wanted to do it and I had no onions, and I thought, well... What about shallots? Maybe we can try shallots. See, where can you see that best here? So, part of the problem with onions and garlic and shallots is that you can never get the skin off of them. So what I do with my shallots is I do what I do with the garlic, is I kind of pound them a little bit. There we go. And that just kind of smashes, and that didn't smash so well, can I just tell you? That was a very bad example of what I'm talking about. That if you, there we go. You smash it like that, turn this over, smash it. Then the skin just peels off really easily. <laughs> and of course, it may not be so easy because I'm live on Facebook and anything live always goes like you don't want it to or that you don't think it's going to. So here we go with the shallots. I have one full shallot. Let's give this a stir so it doesn't burn. I'm going to turn it down one more. Okay. Stirring the shallot, or the fennel. Here's the... Now, you can... As I get organized on these live Facebooks challenge, and I start doing them every day so that I can help you, you, get rid of the dinner dreads, um, I... And working to get organized to have the recipes and what we're going to be doing um, in the Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group. So um, you can cook along with me or you can watch what I'm doing now and go run out to the grocery store and duplicate it. But as I started to say, because my husband is coming home a little bit later tonight, I am going to only partially cook this and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to add to it when I reheat it to make with our dinner. I thought about that. I thought, oh my gosh, I can't finish totally making this or it'll be kind of old by the time he gets home. So, okay, finishing with the shallot, getting the last bit of skin off. Okay. There we go. Who else is? Oh, my mother is watching. Hey, Mom. I love that when my mom is watching. Okay, so... Um, I could say send me a heart, but I don't know if you know how to do that. But if you do, send me a heart. Okay. All right. You know you're doing a good job when your mom is watching, right? Hopefully. <laughs> okay. So, shallot into the pot. Now, what I love about using shallot in this pot right here is that it has a better taste, right? Sometimes onions can be so strong. And Brussels sprouts also are very, very strong. So we don't want to contaminate, it's kind of a bad word, but you don't want two really strong flavors that are fighting with each other um, on this. So I'm gonna stir this up, get it nice and soft. soft. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more olive oil. And the reason that I'm doing that is because it will start to sweat these just a little bit more and soften them. And very shortly after, I'm going to go ahead and add these Brussels sprouts. So once again, they came out of this bag. There we go. Came out of this bag. And, whoops, that bag. <laughs> and we did clean them and rinse them because sometimes vegetables out of a bag have a smell that just is not appetizing. So I always clean them really, really well. 
So, okay, I think these have softened enough. And we are going to, oh my gosh, all right. We're going to pour in, this is two bags of the shaved Brussels sprouts. Okay. Now the really nice thing about this large pot that my sister gave me, that I am now using, is that there's lots of room to saute these around. And what is going to happen is they are going to shrink down as they soften. And we are going to toss these around and keep stirring so that everything has an opportunity to cook down. Like this. I think we need a little bit of salt and pepper, so I'm gonna step out of the frame really quickly. So I always grind my own pepper. Who just sent me something? Janet Spano and Judy Kalugin. Wow, you guys, thanks for being here. So good to see you. Hi, we're cooking. We're trying to get rid of the dinner dread so that people can actually cook without getting all stressed out at the end of the day. This is a shaved Brussels sprout recipe that I actually created on my own and I love it and my family loves it. I'm only gonna partially cook it because Tom's gonna be home for dinner and I don't want it to be overcooked by the time he gets here. So let me see, how, I, I don't know if I can tell how many people are live watching, but okay. So what I was saying is I always grind my own pepper and you can see I need to do it again. So the best way to grind your own pepper is go to, um, geez, where do I go? I go to Costco and I get a big thing, let me show you. But I get these, you guys have probably all seen it at Costco, these, whoop, these whole peppercorns right here. I take the peppercorns and put them in a coffee grinder, which I don't use for coffee. I always use it for black pepper. And I grind up my pepper about, I don't know, once or twice a month. And, um, and if I'm having a dinner party and I'm having people over, then I dump the black pepper that's been sitting there for a week or two and I grind fresh black pepper um, so that I can make sure that all my flavors are really great. Um, and also, my salt that I use is kosher salt. So the salt itself is not kosher, but it is used for koshering, meaning the process to kosher meats or other things this salt is used for that, and it is less salty than iodized salt and much better for you. Um, so I always cook with kosher salt because salt brings out the flavors in everything, but if you put in too much of it um, or you use the wrong kind of salt, it really actually ruins your dish. It doesn't enhance it, and I don't want you to have that happen. So next thing are these mushrooms. I use crimini or portobella. I don't particularly care for white mushrooms in this. But what I'm going to do right now, because these are starting to get really dark, beautiful green, so I'm going to turn this off. And I'm only turning it off so that I can have this dinner still be fresh for Tom. And I'm going to take these mushrooms. If I could get them open, it would be even better. There we go. And I'm just going to sprinkle them in whole because mushrooms shrink. I think I need to sprinkle them. Okay. So I'm just going to pour. Whoop! I'm just going to pour these in. Now mushrooms that have been sliced and put in a bag have definitely been washed and dried, so I don't worry too much. And if I didn't buy them on a Monday morning, fresh from the delivery at Whole Foods, I would have opened them and smelled them first or let them air out, but I guess I just didn't get to that. So there's the mushrooms. And now I'm going to make sure this is off, and I'm gonna show you how I am going to finish this fish. So when Tom gets home later tonight, usually he's watching, believe it or not, so I don't know where he is, because usually he asks questions. <laughs> and I'm always so excited to have him join me. And then he asks funny things like, are you cooking tonight? Well, 
Yeah, I'm cooking tonight. What do you think I'm doing right now? I am cooking. So what um, So what I do with these, and you can find this also on nannybubby.com. Um, uh, what is, oh, there he is. He just said I'm here. <laughs> Tell me what you just, okay, you've got to let me know you're here, my friend, my husband, my love. Okay, uh, in Game Changers, go to nannybubby.com and the Game Changers uh, tab. And this is a tomato slicer. And can I tell you, this is my favorite kitchen tool. So you take these, look at that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine tomatoes sliced, all done. Boom! All right, so I'm gonna take these. I am going to slice them all. I'm gonna cover them with a little bit of saran wrap. And they will stay fresh and not get soggy. It's only a couple hours away before hubby is gonna be walking through that door. See, I even still get the dinner dreads, even just cooking for my husband and my son. I really do because some days it's like, oh my gosh, I've gotten so busy. I didn't think, I, I allowed myself to get out from underneath it. And there's just no reason to ever put that kind of stress on yourself. Food sustains us, food nourishes us. Food is not something to be afraid of or to fear. It is something to be enjoyed and loved and shared. And when I got that, when I began to understand that, everything changed for me. This is not so easy right now. Okay, there we go, pouring more of that in. Okay, I'm gonna just, that almost fills that. I'm gonna just do a little bit more. These are the tiny heirloom tomatoes. I like to mix up the colors, make sure I get yellow and this maroon. This is one of my branding colors. I love this maroon colored heirloom Kamado tomato. And I will tell you that I always cook with organics. And um, I'm going to have somebody on the podcast and be doing an interview with her. Um, yes, it is a must buy, Roseanne. Go on um, Game Changers on the nannybubby.com tab and you can purchase it right off of Amazon, right off my page, or you can you know, just go under your own Amazon and do it. Um, but I wanted to make it easy for everyone to be able to find this stuff. I, I find so many fun kitchen items that I absolutely love. And I just want to share. I'm the kind of person that if I have good chocolate cake, I want everybody to know about that chocolate cake. If I find anything that I love, I have to share and I want to make everything um, easy. Okay, all right, there we go. Tawny, you have one too already? And Roseanne, do you both have one of these already? Or are you, um, are you gonna get one? I can't tell for sure. Okay, so. This is how I'm gonna finish off this dish. When Tom comes home, and just let me show you. So can you see that okay? So the, um, it's just starting to get green. I'm gonna turn it off, I'm gonna put the top on it. When he comes to the door, I am going to uh, reheat it. I'm going to dump in the tomatoes because this would have wilted, and, you know, and you want them just to be warmed because tomatoes are soft already, so you don't need to saute them to get soft. And I'm going to finish this off with an apple. This is um, a Fuji apple, which is one of my most favorite apples ever. I'm gonna leave the skin on, I'm just gonna chop it in little pieces, put it in with the Brussels sprouts, and I'm going to finish it off. Now let me show you. This is not on Game Changers, but I'm gonna share it with you. What is on Game Changers is the Temecula olive oil. Whoops, there we go, can you see that? I love Temecula olive oil. And uh, this is their strawberry mint uh, balsamic vinaigrette, right? Balsamic vinegar. Can you imagine strawberry mint? How does that sound? It sounds amazing, it sounds amazing. So I'm gonna put about a tablespoon and a half in this to toss it, but this, so during the shutdown, I could not get my order from Temecula Olive Oil Company, and I am a fiend for orange olive oil. And I found this, it's called Big Paw Olive Oil Company. They must be from around here somewhere because I found them at the swap meet, and they were selling the orange flavored olive oil, and I love that. So to finish this off, in goes the tomatoes while it's hot. 
I'm going to get um, everything softened up, get the mushrooms to come down a little bit softer and smaller. Then I'm gonna add the tomatoes, saute it around for about a minute or two. I'm gonna chop up this apple and throw it in and finish it off with the orange olive oil and a tablespoon and a half of the uh, balsamic vinegar. And it's gonna be absolutely del delicious, right? And I'm going to serve that with um, salmon. So I'm going to poach, I was gonna tell you guys a funny story and I'm debating in my head whether I should tell you guys this story because it's really silly and embarrassing but I'm gonna tell you. So in this um, dish is salmon and it's defrosting. I'm going to poach it in vegetable, um, hey Susan Harrison, how are you? Um, uh, I'm gonna poach it in vegetable broth and I'm going to take these braising greens. Where are those braising greens? I thought I brought them out. Okay, right, right here. Okay, here they are. I get these from Desert Bloom Farms and uh, they're braising greens and I'm going to put them in with the uh, salmon to braise in the broth and uh, it should be a delicious dinner, very healthy dinner. Everything is organic, which I love. So here I'm going to close with this hilarious story. So right before, um, so let me show you. Right before I came live on the air, so I drink 64 ounces of water every day in from this pitcher. You can see how big it is. It's amazing. Just got, just got it because my other one broke. And uh, naturally, after 64 ounces of water, you gotta make sure you are not far from the closest bathroom. By this time of day, it's not so bad. It's usually all done by 8 a.m., all out by 10 but I was a little slow this morning. So needless to say, last thing before you go live on the air, you think to yourself, you know, I need to go uh, run to the bathroom. So I did. Anyway, I came back out and I was getting ready and getting everything and setting up the camera on the tripod and the whole thing. And the dog wanted out and I went walking to let the dog out and I tripped. And I'm like, what am I tripping on? And I turned and I looked, so embarrassing. And there was a piece of toilet paper stuck in the back of my, um, uh, and I thought, oh my God, if I turned around to show you the salmon, you would have seen, like it would have been live on the air, the toilet paper hanging on in my pants. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed, but it was so funny. And there's nobody I know, right? And there's nobody here to share it with, so I had to tell somebody, so I'm, I'm telling all of you. So thank God it's a story and it didn't actually happen because you'd all be um, telling me, you know, oh my God, look what just happened, so. Anyway, Jennifer Tuttle, hey, how are you? Oh, and thanks for the haha. -ha. Okay, everybody, that's Dinner with Nanny Bubby. Tune in um, Friday uh, between 3 and 3.30 to uh, look at our hot dog mummies for Halloween to serve to your family. I'm excited to be doing that. Tune in, uh, you know, go to the nannybubby.com um, page to look up under... Um, game changers for any of the items that you see here. And also, that way it makes it easy for you to find them. And also, any of you that are not members of the Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group, go over and ask to join. I'll tell you what I'm gonna be doing in two weeks. Hey, Mark Goldberg, got the mics fixed. Um, in about two weeks from now, we are going to be doing live interviews at three o'clock with di different food specialists who are going to come on and talk to us about food. And one of my first interviews, so I'm gonna do three o'clock uh, cooking Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have to go over to the Facebook, uh, Nanny B Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook uh, group in order to see these live interviews. My first interview is with Colette Brown. She is a skin specialist and she is healing acne with food and the way that you eat and what you eat per individual. And one of the things she's seeing as a food specialist is mask knee. Do you know what mask knee is? It's acne that you get from being under your mask all day long. Many of you in the food industry or my daughter who is a judge has to wear a mask all the time and everyone's faces, not everyone's, but some people's faces are breaking out from the hot breath, etc. So she is going to talk about curing mask knee. That's November 10th, Tuesday, 3 p.m. in the Facebook uh, gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group. It's such a mouthful. I struggle with it. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm.
Goodbye, everybody.